from MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Ute leaders decide not to wait around to see what new Governor Greg Gianforte does. Coming up, we'll explain how the city is moving ahead with its own coronavirus protection plan. I'm Mike Dennison in Helena. Coming up, a new book takes a critical look at Montana's correctional treatment programs. Well, good morning. I'm Holly Brantley here with Matt Elwell. Chet Lehman has the day off. It is Wednesday, your Wednesday before Christmas. And Matt, you are outside. How's the weather out uh, there? It's chilly, but it's not cold necessarily, mainly because we don't have any wind. Yesterday, uh, temperatures were extremely different, uh, about a 30 degree swing between yesterday and today. Our big issue this morning, snow and ice, and of course, the cold conditions for the early part of the morning. Look at the temperature in West Yellowstone, nine below. They picked up less than an inch of snow in an area that desperately needs to pick up snow. Temperatures holding into the teens for most of the area. Our skies are fairly clear, uh, or at least clearing. There may be some suspended snow falling from the skies. Uh, won't last long. Temperatures expected to be near the 30 degree mark as you head into the mid afternoon. A lot of ice on the area roadways as you're looking into Butte right now. We're probably going to only warm, in, warm into the 20s, but warmer temperatures on the way for Christmas. Your complete forecast, of course, coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thanks, Matt. Well, Highway 191 in Gallatin County and Gallatin Canyon was closed for four hours late yesterday because of a vehicle crash. It was due to a serious traffic accident near mile marker 64. The Montana Highway Patrol incident report says it was a fatal crash. The MHP is not yet releasing details of that crash that closed the road. About eight last night, the sheriff's office reported traffic was moving again, but only slowly. Well, the Butte Silver Bow Health Department has voted to enforce a mask mandate for the community. This comes as the newly elected governor, Greg Gianforte, could roll back the state mask mandate. This is not punishment. We are actually trying to, I, I think our goal is pretty simple. If we can get our numbers down, then we can also reduce restrictions at all place together in the same vain you know and uh, the idea that we, it, this is not a punishment i hope people realize that community members called in to voice their thoughts on the mask mandate while a few thought that the mandate would impede on the governor's power many were in favor the butte silver bow county health officer karen sullivan says the vaccinations will be will begin soon and she says she hopes that by the, that by late may or june things will go back to normal well, after a lengthy debate in committee, Republicans of the Montana House failed to agree on a set of rules for the upcoming 2021 legislature. That failure likely kicks the decision forward to the opening of the session on January 4th in Helena. House Republicans initially proposed changing the rules to allow committee chairs to kill bills without hearing and to require 67 votes in the full House to bring a bill stuck in committee to the floor. At the meeting, a majority of the panel voted to remove those changes, but when it came to passing the recommended rules, several Republicans balked and the motion failed on a 10-9 vote. Republicans who opposed the rules say they like they. They like the original proposal that gives committee chairs and the Speaker of the House more power. Democrats on the panel also voted against any rule changes because they like the old rules, which are more in their favor. For now, those rules are still in effect. The full House, when it meets in session next month, must now decide how to revise its rules before moving forward. Well, a Clarkston woman was arrested on Monday after court documents say she shot a gun at her daughter's boyfriend while threat and was threatening him. 39 year old Amanda Allen is facing charges of assault with a weapon after Gallatin County deputies responded to a disturbance on Old Coach Road in Clarkston. According to charging documents, the victim's girlfriend had invited him over to make breakfast. The victim then told the reporting deputy that Allen got upset he was making breakfast and began yelling at him and her daughter to get out of the house. Allen said the boyfriend dropped his pants and showed her his behind on the way out. Court documents say Allen shot at him and his back as his back was turned and told him the next bullet was going to his back. Allen was taken to the Gallatin County Detention Center where bail is set at $15,000. Allen's next court appearance is scheduled for January 15th. Well, we have an update on a story we first reported last month. The Montana Department of Transportation reached out to tell us a team made up of state agencies and contractors from the Toast and Structures Project worked together to pick up trash along an eight-mile stretch of the Missouri River. 
MGT, Fish and Wildlife and Parks, Riverside Contracting and Sleeton Construction removed plastic water bottles, lum lumber, channel marker bu buoys and other trash between Tolston and York's Island. According to MDT, the cleanup effort was in response to an MTN story about an unusual amount of trash downstream from the project. These are pictures MDT took of that cleanup and were posted on the agency's Facebook page. We began looking into the amount of trash on that section of the river after a concerned citizen reached out to us seeking answers. In their email to MTN, MDT said, quote, All parties involved felt it is important to follow up with MTN as the presence of debris downstream of the new bridges cast a negative light over an otherwise outstanding infrastructure improvement. That's, uh, that is a quote there. Well, MDT suggests that anyone with concern about the project call the Construction Information Hotline at 1-800-18982. Uh, excuse me, that's 1-800-982-3161. Well, more than two years ago, Montana Corrections officials abruptly closed a successful treatment program in Boulder for female criminal offenders. Now, two former staffers at that program have written a book that not only questions why the closure happened, but also takes aim at the state correction department's entire structure and philosophy of treatment for offenders under its control. MTN's Mike Dennison has the story. Michael Johnson was head of security at the state-run Riverside Recovery and Reentry Program on the outskirts of Boulder, and Rhonda Champagne, its lead counselor and therapist. They are co-authors of the just-published book, Correcting Treatment in Corrections, which relates how the Riverside program began in 2016 and then came to a sudden end two and a half years later. At the beginning, Johnson and Champagne clashed over whether women in the program should be strip searched upon arrival, as they are now in secure state sanctioned facilities in Montana for criminal offenders. You can't start off treatment, in my opinion, by absolutely tearing a person down to their basic nakedness um, in, a, in a most humiliating manner. I don't care how nicely you tell somebody to take their clothes off. That's not treatment. Johnson and his boss agreed to waive the policy, and he says that change was a key to the program's success. They respected that so much that we didn't do that. They managed themselves. Uh, they just really valued the way we treated them. Most of the women who entered Riverside were drug offenders and had undergone significant trauma in their lives, drug or alcohol addiction, domestic abuse, losing their children, or witnessing a loved one commit suicide. Champagne said Riverside focused on addressing that trauma and rebuilding the women's confidence and self-esteem without an emphasis on punishment. She and Johnson say the program was working and cite department data showing that two-thirds of Riverside's graduates had stayed out of prison for more than a year. But out of the blue in September 2018, DOC officials shut down the program, telling employees at a meeting with one day's notice. We were running what we were being told was a successful program. So none of us were prepared for a closure of that sort. DOC officials said they needed the facility to house geriatric inmates who would be moved to Riverside from a facility being closed in Lewistown. And they told employees Montana already had two treatment programs for women inmates run by private contractors and didn't need a third one. Johnson said he and Champaign and also the legislative auditor began examining some of those contracts. Those contracts are absolutely what closed down a program that was doing very well and meeting Department of Corrections goals, reducing recidivism, reintegrating people back into the community successfully, stronger, overcoming their addictions and overcoming their traumas. So what's in those contracts? Did they play a role in the closure of Riverside? And how do they shape correctional policy in Montana? We'll take a closer look at those questions tomorrow. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. For a more detailed, in-depth look at the book's criticism of corrections policy and the state's response, you can read Mike Dennison's story on our website. Well, coming up here, we will have another check of your forecast if Matt decides to come back. And if not, the coronavirus has now encircled the globe. After the break, find out how the virus has now made it to the last continent where it has not yet been found. But first, here's a look at what you'll see at 7 on CBS This Morning. Good morning ahead on CBS this morning as COVID cases continue to soar. Who should be the next group to be vaccinated? Hear how some wealthy people are trying to buy their way to the front of the line. 
Also, researchers say sending 100 emails has the same carbon footprint as driving one mile in a car. Our Eye on Earth series shows how working from home may actually hurt the environment. And we'll take you to a city where the pandemic couldn't dim a holiday tradition. How a little inspiration from the past kept the lights on in 2020. We'll see you at 7.